track just keeps on giving. I don't think I'm getting up that. Turning out to be quite the interesting track, this one. A few like rocky creek crossings to navigate. They've got some decent sized rocks and you got to really pick your line. I've got a big hole in here in the ground, just like gonna pretty much nose in and send back up out the other side. just keeps on giving. I don't think I'm getting up that. We've got another slushy muddy bit here in front of us. So rather not get stuck again. I'm gonna go second gear low with the rear locker in. Send it through. It's just been chewed to pieces by motorbikes. This track has like all motorbike markings and arrows and directions on it so it obviously gets used as a bit of a, like a motorbike race through track. Back out of that track, back down on the creek here. Gonna relax for a bit, have a swim, have some lunch. And then we're gonna head towards Karua, where we're gonna camp tonight. Hey Kai, look at the tree. <laughs> it's alive. There's a canoe so you can go canoeing. Barbecue. Got some magazines to read. Let's have a look at what's inside. It's a horror story. We can sleep here. Let's take the bed. Whoa. It's like a fully... No, I can't really see in the camera. Turn the ISO right up. Blast it. Wow. There's a bedroom with a bed. Because it's a bedroom. There's obviously a bed. That's crazy. We we can sleep here. We could. Wait, let's actually set up camp here. No. Visitor's book. Oh, mm, visitor's book. <laughs> I'm definitely way better spotting than you, Dad. Please help keep this beautiful area safe, clean, and no, and clean for all to enjoy. We need a ride in it. We do need a pen. Tyler and Malachi Thompson spent two nights slash days out exploring this awesome area. Full driving camping will definitely be back one day. Just stopped from where we had lunch. Found this 
awesome little hut just down this track on the creek here got a nice big swimming hole it's just kept in immaculate condition there's a bed inside and everything you got like table chairs fire pit out here got all different uh pots and pans and cutlery and plates so cool to find this place out here quite the steep hill climb that one <laughs> that's the Karua river down there after we left out I came out of the bush in that last spot and then oh, maybe 45 minutes on the main road through to oh, this Karua National Park first time I've ever been in here before sort of all new things I'm doing this trip come through the National Park down to the river beautiful like camp area down there on the edge of the river it's coming up sort of four o'clock now just gonna have a little bit of a drive around and then we'll find a spot out here on the river somewhere tonight If I come this side, it's not too deep. Out in that side, it's a bit deeper. Went for a bit of a cruise around. There's actually quite a few four drive tracks all around here, everywhere, heading down to the river. But we did a couple. Went to another spot just down there, the main uh, campground in this area. There was quite a few people there. So it was, coming up fires just so we pop back down to this one we might do a bit more exploring around here tomorrow but we got a car there beautiful spot just there on the river the tides right out at the moment so once tide comes in the water should come right up there set up camp here Whoa. <laughs> Such a beautiful spot down here on the river. We got the rooftop tent set up so we can look out over the water there. We'll be able to see the sunrise in the morning. We got our fire going. Kai's chopping up some wood now. It's beautiful out here. I know a heap of people were asking whether the stuff around the edge of the fire gets hot. Depends how big your fire is. Well, there's a little bit of heat there, heat here if you want something to stay cold. <laughs> it's probably not the best place to sit it, but it's just, you, things do get a little bit of warmth once, once they've been sitting here for a bit. But if you had a massive fire, they're probably, they're probably gonna get hot, but you know, a nice little warm one like this, all good. Just making up some toasted sandwiches for dinner tonight. It's super handy. Keeps you warm while you're here working. You got the uh, space here to make your dinner. So beautiful on the river here. This nice little hill climb coming up out of the river here. I'm keen to have a crack at it. We've got this massive rut here. I'm not sure if to get in it or to try and ride the wall. I don't know. <laughs> See what happens. Maybe try and ride this wall a bit. I think the back went in. It's a bit hard when you don't have anyone guiding you.
bit better that time. Now up the next pit here. I realise I don't even have the locker in. So there we go without it. Don't put it in. No, don't even need it. <laughs> That was a beautiful spot where we camped last night on the river there. Just woke up, had like all the, uh, I don't know what it is, it was like fog, steam, mist, sort of over the, looking over the river there everywhere as you woke up looking out the rooftop tent. We packed, uh, sort of hung around there for a bit, packed up camp. We're going for a bit of a drive now to explore the area and see the tracks and see what other sort of camp spots and things around here for next time we come back. And then we're going to head through to uh, the beaches, through the Mungo Brush area, I think, and go through a drive along the beach and have a swim, hang at the beach stuff. And yeah, it's a nice, sunny, spring, warm day. Made it down to the beach. Look how cool this is. We've got this whole place to ourselves here. The closest car is uh, K up the beach there. So there's one car come down the end. So we came in at Hawk's Nest and sort of came down the road a bit. Beach uh, track onto the beach and then up to Little Gibber. So we sort of Little Gibber headland now. Monday lunchtime set up here. It's nice and protected here. The water's so clear. It's absolutely beautiful. We got the awning set up, we're protected from the wind here. It was a little spider on the camera lens there. Settle in here for the next few hours, what a spot. The water's so nice and refreshing. The fridge is looking a little uh, worse for wear these days. <laughs> well, the fridge is still all right. I think it needs a new cover for it. It's been in the back of the ute. Four or five years now, still running strong though. I just the cover's in pieces. <laughs> no. We came back off that beach, such a beautiful spot there. We came back off that beach and sort of headed along through Mile Lakes through Mungo Brush. We're going to camp at the Mungo Brush campgrounds, but realize there's no fires allowed there. It's all sort of um, pre booked now with COVID national parks, and that's we were just going to book over the phones and we got there. But with the no fires, I figured we'd keep going. We're going to catch the ferry. Uh, we're just here getting it now, it's about 
well, 5.30, because it closed at 6. Get the ferry across the river, the sun's just going down now, it's beautiful here. And we're gonna try, I've never been across the ferry before, but there's a couple of camp spots over the other side on the lake, on the river sort of lake. And I think you are allowed fires at those ones. So we're gonna head over there, see how we go, but hopefully get there before dark. Found ourselves a spot here for the night on the other side of the ferry, a couple of k's down the road, or a few k's maybe, turn right into the bush. Forget the name of it, it starts with K. What was the name of this campground, Kai? It starts I remember. It starts with K. Corson's Corrosion. Corrosion. Cor something. Quick spell. Anyways, found a spot here. The good thing is you're allowed fires here, so we'll be able to get a fire going tonight. There's a few, a few other people up there a bit, but we've got a spot uh, to ourselves here, kind of on the edge of the lakes. This is all still the Mile Lakes area. Get this fire going and cook some dinner. I'm hungry and I'm worn out. Yeah. And also want to warm up. Awesome spot here we had on the edge of this lake last night. There's sort of a few scattered campsites all through this area, back up in the bushes. So many birds this morning. I don't know, it's seen the first light about 5, 5.30. It was just like a deafening roar of birds through the bush. This is our last day, last morning. We're just going to hang here for a bit, um, cook up some brekkie, pack up, maybe have a swim at the lake, and then we'll make the drive home. That's pretty much the end of another awesome few days away. That was so much fun. We got really nice weather and found some really good spots. Just kind of took it a bit easier this trip. We still did some uh, good full driving, but a bit less driving and a bit more sort of relaxing at the creeks and rivers and the beach, and that was really nice. Just finishing all this pack up now, and then we'll head off. If you do want to give a little bit of extra support on these videos, I got the Patreon. I'll put a link down below. I think it's just patreon.com slash Tyler Thompson, but got a few people on there now, which is really good. So if you just want to throw a couple bucks per video or whatever, and then I put the videos up there a week or two earlier and always answer everyone's questions on there and people send me messages for locations and directions and all that. So you can always jump on there. It's really appreciated. Um, just put all that money towards like camera gear and uh, editing equipment, funding these trips, all that different stuff. Just like getting, no lately I'm just getting a little bit overwhelmed with um, like questions and that from people that I'm trying to get through, which is good. Like I like talking to people and that. I'm getting to the point where it's, you know, sort of an hour to two hours a day between Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, trying to apply to everyone's messages and comments and things like that. So I'll probably just have to slowly start like backing off that. Such a beautiful spot down here on the river. We got the tent set up. Came back off that beach there. And that's all I got to say. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause for that $8 speech. <laughs> paid for. That, what a speech. What a speech. That was, that, that will cost $8 for everybody, please. <laughs> Eight dollars, please, or any you know, for, for the for the glorious speech. Eight dollars. Had a little bit of a no, I'm too close on. Always make sure to get back to people on Patreon first. You know that sort of. Oh God, I can't think of what to say. That's where I always sort of make sure I, you know give all that information. Yeah.